Hi everyone, my name is Benita and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to colour the Celtic Knot work using the design by Carrie Buziak from the brilliant Colouring Heaven collection issue 47 Celtic Mandalas. If you enjoy this tutorial and would like to colour along you can order your copy from shop.colouringheaven.com and the link will be in the description below. The aim of today is to show you how we can get this beautiful section here really, really 3D looking. And when we learn how we can do that here, that can be easily translated into the summer the knot work on the inside stunning design that we have in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a section on the outside and a certain section on the inside as well, just so you can see how easy it is to apply the technique. And we're just gonna use three colors to start with. I've opted for a beautiful green. And the darkest one that we have is uh, Polychromo Chrome Oxide Green, which is number 278. We have Earth Green Yellowish, which is 168. And then we have our Cadmium Yellow Lemon, which is 205. So we have our light, our middle and our dark. So we are going to always work from our lightest colour first. And we're going to just work and a little bit of this section here. So to begin with, I'm just gonna do the top bit zoomed out so you can get a bit of the effect, and then I shall zoom you in so you can see a bit more of the technique closer. And it is entirely up to you, but you can fill in the whole of the framework in the lightest color first if you wanted to work in that way. If not, then you can work in little sections. It doesn't make a difference to how the finished look will uh, display. So we'll just pop the light color down there and then make sure we've got a good coverage. And then we're gonna go in with our middle color. And our middle color, we're gonna start from where that crossover is and we're gonna come and leave a nice section in the middle which is still light and a good way of doing a bit of shading is just altering the pressure on your pencil so don't press too hard as you come to the middle and it will give you a nice little easy transitional blend there and then we can come in with our darkest color and again from where it crosses over we're just going to come out a little bit of that area but not too far and that just helps us create a little bit of a shadow underneath. So I'm going to zoom you in now so you can watch that technique again happening a bit closer. So we shall continue working with our middle colour and our dark colour on this little section here. So each time it passes under, that's where you want to go in with your middle section. And it's up to you how much of that you then want to leave light. I am going to bring my middle section up to the corners, like so. And then I'm going to grab my dark and just again. We don't want to come up too far. We just want to give a little bit of the illusion of the shadow just where it crosses over. We're going to repeat that same process on the other side just where each of the crossover sections are and then when they come underneath so again on this bit I'm just going to bring that mid color up a little bit further if you want to work on each section a little bit of a time then that's absolutely fine because sometimes it can be easy to get lost on these types of patterns but it's such a beautiful pattern um, and it's so well drawn that actually it's incredibly easy to keep along with the flow so it will be one that you will be able to master very very quickly i feel so we're going to then go in with our dark Sometimes you don't even need to bring that section out. Sometimes it just needs to be a little bit of dark right under where that crossover is. So all you've got to do is just really observe what goes under and what goes over. So everything that goes under needs to be slightly darker. And if it goes over, then it needs to be slightly lighter. So they're just the things to remember 
going forward when you're coloring this style of design but you can see here quickly how it has rendered up beautifully and it has given you that wonderful crossover and cross under effect there with the light so i'm just going to repeat that process on let's do this little knot here again we're going to fill the whole area with lights make sure that we get that nice color lay down there we'll come all the way to this end piece and then we're going to go in with our mid color and we're going to join up like we've done on the top there so we're going to leave a little section in the middle highlighted and i'll give you a little tip in a second with regards to the highest peaks on the ones that cross over rather than under and that will really really help that 3d um, push the heights of when it crosses over uh, so for example this section here and this section here so this section doesn't have quite a tight crossover as this one if you look this one's quite short compared to this one here so what we would do in that instance is we would bring the middle color a little bit further into the middle like so and our shadow color so our darkest color we would only really do at the very very edges or close to where that crossover section you can instantly see it's given that 3d look where we have a smaller version here we can bring our middle color a bit further into the center so we're left with like a flash of a highlight streak just in the very middle and then when we come in with our dark out we can bring that up a little bit more than we did with the previous one i'm going to blend that with a little bit more of the middle color and you can see how much tighter that has made that little section which makes it feel like it's got more of a tighter curl so it's peaking uh, over that bit more tighter so we can repeat that process so on these longer sections we don't need to come out as far with our shadows so we're just a little bit as and when we meet where the crossover sits and again here this one would actually be fairly flat so if you wanted to you could always go all the way over just lighten your pencil pressure on the middle and then we'll just go in with a bit of dark underneath and we're just going to rinse and repeat that process as we go around don't forget you can buy your version of this coloring book from shop.colorinheaven dot com and again the artist was uh, Kari Buziak hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly and the issue is 46 Celtic mandalas and it is absolutely stunning so we'll do this last one and then what we shall do is we shall move over to the dogs so you can see how we can carry on this technique on the dogs and the sections that cross over with them and make everything look beautiful and 3d of course you can choose whatever color you like i just chose green today as i thought it went particularly well with this design a nice earthy color so you see here this beautiful little knot you can clearly see what goes in and under and over because of where we have those shadows lying so what we're going to do now is we're going to move into one of the other sections. I have marked very lightly the section that I'm just going to work on, including using this technique here. So I've made sure we've kept that on the screen for you so you can refer back to it if you need to sort of see the illusion that adding those shadows will give. So very quickly what I'll do is I'll just do this section above the hound here. And again, working with our lightest color first, and we're just gonna fill that around. And then our, oops, I broke my towel then, our middle color. Now the knots work slightly different on here. So I want to show you how the shadowing uh, can still be effective, even though the knots are slightly different. So all I would do is come out further 
with my middle colour. Like here, for example, I could come all the way to the top and I would leave this top section lighter to act as like a peak where the light would be hitting at the very, very top. And what you could do to make it look even more 3D is when you come in with your dark colour, we of course would go underneath because it would be casting a shadow. But we can also add a bit of shadowing just on the inside of these ones that loop over. Just like so, just on the inner edge there. And again, all these sort of little adjustments can help make something look quite nice and 3D. And again, we're just going to push that middle section out. Now on these, you don't necessarily have to have your shadow on the other side because of where the folds are. We're not directly in or above. But you can see that just adding that little bit of a shadow section there is enough for it to look nice and 3D and to make it clear that that is running through the centre of this section here. Now we can still use that technique on areas of the dog. So if we just continue to use our light colour and I'm going to shade over everywhere. I liked the idea of this being monochromatic and the idea of it being simple and again with it being Celtic and the, the beautiful green colours, very, very reminiscent. So of course you can make yours nice and bright and colourful if you decide to or if you want to keep it simple then you know a monochromatic palette can be absolutely wonderful. If you're not sure what I mean by monochromatic it is not just your standard black and white. Monochromatic essentially means one colour just varying degrees of that colour so in this instance our um, medium, our light and our dark. So I've done all the area that I want to do in the lightest colour. We are then going to start to go in with our mediums. So if we, in my mind, have this as a piece of armour, I'm going to have a little bit of shadowing happening underneath this armour. And I want to make him look nice and rounded as well. So I'm going to think of all the areas where it would start to create some shape. And then on this section here, I'm just going to start on the left side and keep everything that I want thinking that is hitting the light nice and bright. So, and the, I guess the important thing for it to look 3D as well is consistency. So once you decide where your shadows are going to be, try and make that consistent throughout your, your colouring page and it will really, really help make these absolutely stunning designs. Uh, just pop. So I haven't had a huge amount of the uh, light colour down as we don't really need it. So we want to have primarily just a little bit of, of gentle shading happening. And then once I come in with my dark, like I can fill that section in nice and saturated. And then under here where there wouldn't be any light and I'll just very gently come out and then a little bit under his armour. And again, it just makes it look like it's sat on top. And I'm going to put a little bit under the ear section here. And then I'm going to choose this side to be my shadow side. So this is the side that as I come and do all the sections on the top of his head, this is the side I'm going to choose to do them all on. And then these little bits of fur just underneath again where it might cast a shadow and of course we can't forget his little tongue there so I'm going to just come in with the medium section and we're going to go underneath his tongue on the very bottom and this of course would then trail out in fact I will do that for you we'll come over to this section here so we can see how we can blend that tongue out on each of the hounds. So the medium, we can actually do both at the end here where it meets underneath and where it comes out the mouth. And then again, we're going to go in with some shadow just underneath there. A little bit on top. 
and then again just underneath this section here. It's already giving this a beautiful illusion of being 3D and being under and over. Medium. Add a bit more of the light there. Medium. Again, do you remember how I said that if we come right up to the edge of where that piece comes underneath, it gives it the illusion of being a much tighter over and under pattern. So the gentler your transition from dark to light, the uh, softer it will feel about it going over and under. But the harsher the stops and starts of your shadows and your light, then the tighter the knots feel. So hopefully that has been helpful for you. I'm going to zoom out just so you can see the effect further afield. So there we are zoomed out and it really really does look like a beautiful knot sat here on this absolutely stunning colouring page. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and design don't forget you can order your own copy of Colouring Heaven Collection issue 47 Celtic Mandalas from the online shop. Just head to shop.colouringheaven.com or click on the link in the description and we'd love to see your Celtic Mandala colouring in our Friends of Colouring Heaven Facebook group. Please like, share, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future Colouring Heaven videos. Take care everyone. Bye!